first offshore fishing trip of 2020. It's finally here. Seemed like it took us forever for it to get here. Watching the weather and like every weekend, whenever we had a day off of work, man, that wind just shot up 25, 30 miles an hour. Definitely not good for going way offshore. But today we're going offshore, going out around the ledge, about 50 miles offshore, see if we can catch some wahoo and some bottom fish. So stay tuned. All right guys, it is early in the morning. A couple hours till sunrise, but we're finally going wild fishing. I think it's gonna be flat out there. I think we're gonna catch a lot of fish. We got Clint on the boat, so I know we're gonna have some good luck. We'll do our best anyway. We catch some fish. So uh, here we go, let's get started. We get out and about when I hit about 70 degrees of water and I'm a few miles from some good you know, bottom numbers, I put out my trolling equipment. So what I was doing that day, was I would troll up to some of my numbers, then I'd troll around it and see if there was any bait or fish marking. If there wasn't anything around it, I'd keep going to my next spot and wouldn't waste a lot of time there. I hit quite a few spots. I was hoping I'd find more markings sooner, but I didn't and I just kept working out. Out and kinda down and north south. You know, not straight out, but kinda angling. See what I'm looking for Wahoo? Could be the temperature, you know, could just be location. They could be up and down the coast. So I don't go straight out, I don't go straight south, you know, unless I got good information to go there. But in this case, I'm kind of making angles. I get to another set of live bottom numbers and this area looked really good. There was actually a lot of bait marking. I seen some bait and some fish suspended in the water column. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna troll this area a little harder. I'm gonna work around it more. I'm not gonna be so quick to leave. Spent some time there and it paid off because all of a sudden, the CNH rattle jet got slammed. All right, guys, fish on up high. Right. You ready? Yeah. I mean, that line is just busting out. You see, I got my high-speed setup, right? And I've got really big, heavy-weighted lures on 50s and 70s, you know, big weights, trolling fast. I'm going about 14, 15 miles per hour. But up in the T-top, I got a 30-wide, 40-pound line, and I've got a CNH rattle jet, pretty much how they come right out of the box, okay? Mono rig, everything, a little plastic lure, and I'm trolling that high speeding. And I've caught in a lot of good fish on this lure. It's a really great addition to the spread because it's, it's really different. So you might pull up a wahoo, a dolphin, a kingfish, tuna, you know, whatever. I think it was a wahoo. Yeah, I think that wahoo was screaming it. We got everything. And the answer is... I know. We popped everything. All right. Could have been that boat. Cut it. Unfortunately, though, it got cut off. I think what happened was, uh, you know, that's our way back line, really far back as it is. And when the wahoo hit it, he was tanking even further. So there was a lot of line out there and another boat came by and cut us off. Thought maybe if it was a Wahoo, it cut through the mono leader, which it eventually could have, but where it was cut off was on the line, not just above the lure or the leader or anything. Well guys, that was a good sign. At least we got an idea where the fish are. Oh yeah. So, we're gonna make some more passes and uh, see what we can do. You see, by that fish hitting the lure, it told me there are Wahoo here also told me that they're starting to bite. You see, I may have made a couple passes and been like, okay, well, I guess nothing here, I'll move on. But because I knew that one was there and was feeding, I'm like, well, let me stay here a little bit longer. Because he didn't hit one of my Wahoo lures, he hit my kind of all around lure. So we kept working the area and not long after, a Wahoo hits one of our Wahoo rigs this time. Put a little heat on him. Hit a purple Magbe Sincero lure. That lure has been pretty hot lately. The old chicken trick, guys. Start eating chicken, the fish will bite. You get the blind on them? This ain't trout fishing, Kevin. <laughs> 
I told you, get ready. They're gonna speckle first here. Yeah, they're gonna fall off the face. Yeah. Off. Looking like Popeye. Oh, yeah. yeah. There he is on the top. And you all. It's okay. Uh, just make sure you don't get in that other one. He'll cut it off. Just bring it over here if you have to. Just walk it on, uh, yeah, on the other side of me. Hurry. Uh, he's over me. You must be in me already. Just be careful because it, it'll cut that. I got a leader. He's up there. He's here. Come on. Pull it out off the front. Just don't let go of that rope. Right, right, right. Stay right there. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Watch, watch feet. Woo! There you go. Woo. Nice job. Nice bait. Sarah. That's a good one. Wow, look at that color. Enough for salmon, All right, guys. Just uh, got our first wahoo. That was good. We had that rattle jet get hit first. That's what my dad predicted. I think a wahoo hit that was screaming it. But then it got cut off. I don't know if the wahoo bit through the mono, or probably more likely a, a boat came by and hit it because it was way back. But it told us where the fish were. We kept trolling that area and got our first wahoo. So now. We're just trolling the same area. I like to hit it, give them plenty of time to hit it, and we'll see if we can catch some more. I'm pretty sure there's some here. The bite might have shut down. Sometimes what I like to do is start bottom fishing nearby, and then when we're ready to start trolling, come back and hit the area in an hour or two. And uh, I've gotten to fish that way. So we'll keep at it. We're trolling. We got a four line spread out. Mag Base and Sarah Purple got the first one. And um, we got some other rigs, high speeding. And uh, of course, our CNA rattle jet up in the top. We'll see what happens. Troll the area some more, um, kept working it, but unfortunately, uh, not much going on. So we decided let's do some bottom fishing, you know, see, see what we can find on the bottom. We put down baits and uh, start catching a few fish. It's actually pretty hard though, because the current is blasting. Um, I don't know, sometimes the current's just running really hard. And our issue was we weren't able to anchor. Our anchor kept pulling, you know, wasn't holding us on the spot. Uh, it's getting pretty common and I, I can see why now a lot of boats have that eye pilot and can just kind of hit their GPS, anchor, looks so much easier. You ain't gotta try to figure out your drift or nothing like that. Well, how often? Um, a 10, 20 feet, I'm starting to get hits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you guys doing that one. Just our side of the boat? Yeah. I'm on this side of the boat. Right? I got you. You're going to bring me in there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Get that out. Oh, yeah. See, you bring me in. It's real good. Uh, They're pretty high off the bottom, though. That's what I got. I got your piece of bait on that. I'll play it more. So another cool thing about the trip was I had my Go Fish cam. So I put that on my bottom rod and dropped it down. So I wanted to see what the bottom looked like and how the fish were feeding. We found some really cool footage on it. See, the bite wasn't really hot. It was kind of slow. I don't know if something with the current or what, but we weren't getting a lot of hits. Putting my camera down there, I could see there were quite a few vermilion snapper or beeliners as some call them. And we did catch uh, some of those. You can actually see me pull one up. It's pretty cool though to see them around. Now, one thing with the beeliners, we found that they're always up in the water column a little bit, not right on the bottom. And so when we drop it down, we reel up our lines. 
and you can see this on the camera, you can see the fish are, you know, not on the bottom, they're up a little ways. And I know a lot of questions uh, I get is like, people are like, how dark is it that deep? I'm like, well, it's, it's not really dark at all. I mean, I've been to 120 feet. Today we're fishing around 130, 120. I mean, it was, you know, like normal, kind of clear as day, really. Uh, more light gets down there than you think. I know when you look down from a boat, it looks, it starts getting real dark blue. So you think it's dark down there, but it's really not. It's really quite bright. All right, Clint's on the big one. Big grouper. Big eight day. Ah. Okay. You can be optimistic, right? <laughs> big eight day. If he breaks off, he's going to be a big grouper. <laughs> um, I don't like eight days, right? Yeah. It tastes good to me. Yeah. <laughs> you put some smoke on anything, it tastes good. <laughs> well, it's like a world record. You don't consider that. Good color. <laughs> you got color? Yeah, right. Well, those endangered snappers? Yeah. Amberjack. I told you it was AJ. <laughs> Old forearm buster. Yeah. You want him? Yeah. Okay. Like he's talking. <laughs> he is. He so said I just worked out Clint's forearms. Today I am the Rodan of the boat. Holding it on the spot. Or actually just stand. <clears throat> stay on pretty decently. We also had some times where some like different kinds of jacks, I think either a lesser amber jack or almaco jack, would uh, hit our baits. And you could see the vermilion weren't that into our baits, but sometimes these jacks would come and hit it. And sometimes they'd hit it, you'd see like grunts or jacks hit it when we hit the bottom. Sometimes our, our rigs would hit the bottom and we couldn't get them up fast enough, so those other fish would kind of pounce on our baits. So it's pretty cool. I've been learning a lot from the Go Fish Cam. All right, guys, we tried a little bit of bottom fishing. It didn't go so well. Um, not marking a ton of bait. And even the spot we found it, the current was like ripping it. I mean, we kind of stay on it. We couldn't get our anchor to hold. It's kind of a weird drift with the wind and current. Kind of deceiving as nice as it is out here, but the drift is pretty strong, apparently. So, um, had some, had a bunch of jacks, uh, hammer jacks, stuff like that. And a few vermilion snapper, a few little porgy. But uh, we'll pick back up on the troll, see if we find a good bottom spot, or if we get some wahoo, or tuna, or something. So uh, we'll keep at it. Stay tuned. All right, guys, trolling's been slow. Got a last spot to hit on the bottom before evening, so we're gonna see if we can catch some uh, bee liners and stuff yeah. hooked up. They must have been on that side of the boat instead of this side of the boat. Yeah. This is another big AJ. Ah. Got me smoked. Yeah. <laughs> Old donkey. Come on, you donkey. Oh, yeah. Another AJ. Rename this thing the Reef Donkey. Yeah. <laughs> This is another one of them good. Yeah, everybody got a donkey. Oh, my uh -huh. room. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, this old Tiger ugly stick right here. Is it for me? It's pretty, it's pretty tough. There. <laughs> yeah. Hope you guys learned some good stuff from this video. Some things about trolling for Wahoo, maybe throwing that CNH rattle jet in your spread, see what it gets you high speed trolling. And also bottom fish, seeing how those vermilion snapper feed underwater. So hope you guys learned some stuff. Uh, if you got any questions, don't forget to comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. <laughs>